How's everyone doing today? Uh, my name's Kyle Tooley. I'm a service advisor here at Harley Davidson Scottsdale. Um, so I am the, what's my title, Randy? I guess I'm the build lead, project lead on this year's Custom Kings uh, Sportster build. So um, <clears throat> the rules basically were uh, we had a budget of, I think, $18,000, including the cost of the bike um, to build a custom uh, bike. This year it had to be a Sportster. <coughs> Last year uh, we did a Street 750. Um, so it could be any Sportster. We went with the 48. We like the 48 because of the fat front tire. Um, it's just got a real rugged, rough look to it. Um, our inspiration was the cafe racers of the 50s, 60s, 70s. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, the cafe racer movement started um, mostly in England. Um, and the whole point was to make your bike as light and fast as possible. Um, they were kind of the boy racers, kind of like uh, the kids these days that uh, take their Hondas and their Toyotas and stuff like that and put wings on them. And um, it's kind of a, an unofficial racer, a non-sponsored racer. Um, so they'd strip the bikes down as much as possible. And uh, that's the look we were going for here. Um, Color-wise... Um, we were inspired by the uh, John Player Special racing uh, cars of the 70s uh, and 80s uh, with the black and gold. Um, we did uh, Spooky Fast help us with our finishes on this. Um, they did all of the powder coating, the fenders, this, uh, side covers. Side covers are all hydro dipped to look carbon fiber, uh, but they're not. They're actually metal. So uh, it kind of shows off the range of what they can do over there at Spooky Fest as well uh, with the uh, powder coat and hydro dip. Um, we went with a Roland Sands intake and pipe. Uh, the seat's made by Roland Sands as well. Um, what else do we have? We have some Joker machine, little uh, turn signals on it to keep it legal because that was one of the rules. It had to stay legal. Uh, so we did that to keep it legal. Uh, Roland Sands clip-on bars which were uh, very much a staple of the uh, cafe racers, uh, the clip-ons, uh, get you nice and low and fast. Um, let's see. Uh, we got some of the Harley uh, P&A catalog parts. I think that's from the rail collection is what they call that. Um, new on the Sportster this year was a bigger front end. It's a 49 millimeter front end over the 39 millimeter front ends before. Uh, so it makes it uh, handle a lot better. Um, also, they have the new uh, premium ride emulsion shocks, and those are stock on these now. Um, they're not an option, so uh, way better than the old stocks were. Or, sorry, stock shocks were. I misspoke. Um, and that's it. Does anyone have any questions about it? Sitting there. Um, one of our goals was to make this come in under budget. Um, they gave us $18,000 to work with. Uh, we came in, we're under seventeen five. So, um, you know, the point of a cafe racer was always, those guys didn't have a lot of money. So they were taking stuff off, they were cutting on stuff and doing stuff like that. So uh, we wanted to come in budget and we did. So we're at about 17.5, uh, maybe a little less than that. Uh, hydro tip, um, I wish we had someone here from Spooky Fast, do we? Is anyone here from Spooky Fest? Um, hydro dipping is a, actually a fairly uh, quick process, the dip itself, to apply this. Uh, this stuff here comes as a film, and it's basically floated out in a water tank. And so the part is prepped and cleaned. Uh, they take the part, they dip it through the film slowly. The film uh, adheres to it, and then uh, it dries and cures, and then they clear coat over the top of it. So when the, the, when the coat goes on, it's sort of a matte finish. And then they spray a paint clear coat over the top of it to get that shine. Um, I saw uh, these parts before they got clear coated, and the gold in them, which is pretty subtle, uh, which is what we liked about it, uh, the gold in them didn't come out quite as much until it was clear coated, and then it really popped. So um, it kind of shows you the versatility of that, that hydro dip. Um, they can do all kinds of camo patterns. Hydro dipping is often used on firearms as well. Um, it's it's a really versatile process, the hydro dip, uh, which is why we like it. You know, you don't have to go through the process of painting and prepping and all that stuff. It's it's easier to apply than paint and more cost effective. So that was another thing we liked about it was being cost effective. Oh yeah, yep, yep. It's uh, 
having these done is definitely less expensive than having them painted. And you'd never get you'd never get the pattern like this with paint. It would take you know just tons of man hours to to get that pattern. I wish we could, but you can come up and look as soon as uh, we get a chance. <coughs> the uh, Roland Sands pipe we used a two into one, um, kind of kicks up at the end. It's nice and short and stubby. Went with our our minimal look. Sorry. Roland Sands? I don't know. Is he? Oh, really? Well, that would be awesome. He makes a lot of good products. So um, the clip-ons are also his. Oh. Good question, Randy. Um, so in order to powder coat the frame, the entire bike was stripped down. The engine was removed, uh, bearings were pressed out, all that. Um, it was all sent over to Spooky Fast, uh, where all the black was stripped off it, and then uh, the process of powder coating uh, is applied from there. Uh, when they do the powder coating, they basically electrically charge the frame. The powder coat is sprayed on dry. It's like it's a powder, literally. Uh, they spray it on, it, uh, it adheres because of the charge, um, and then they bake it in an oven about 400 degrees, I think, for like an hour or two, uh, and then it's, it's more durable than paint. None. That is th we left that up to the, the new owner. So uh, once the contest is over, uh, so the, everything is submitted to Harley. It'll go through certain levels of contests. It'll be uh, different bikes will be judged and chosen, um, and a certain number will move on to the next stage, and then it'll be voted down, um, kind of like a Sweet 16 bracket or something like that in basketball. Um, and then uh, when it's all finished, it's up for sale. So that was also kept in mind too. Uh, we didn't want to have a $30,000 uh, Sportster for someone to buy because most people wouldn't. So uh, I'm one of the few people crazy enough to spend that much money on a Sportster. Um, but uh, yeah. Um, the other thing that I like about why they chose the Sportster this year, um, I'm, I'm a big guy. Most people say Sportster is a girl's bike. It's a beginner's bike. Um, I've been run, riding bikes for over 15 years. Um, I'm a big guy. I always ride Sportsters. I have a Sportster sitting upstairs right now that I rode here today. Um, Sportsters are very quick. They are the workhorse of the Harley-Davidson line. Um, they're also, in my opinion, uh, one of the most reliable bikes you can buy. Um, that includes import brands and everything. Um, I love Sportsters. I've had half a dozen of them. No, no. So, um, and they've, you know, Harley's done a good job um, at uh, sort of varying the line of Sportsters. Um, they have, uh, the 883 Low is a good beginner's bike. Um, it's, it's nice and low. Um, seat height is, is really low. Uh, it's a really comfortable bike, but, uh, you know, you start uh, getting up like uh, my personal bike right now is an XR1200. Uh, that is certainly not a be beginner's bike. It's very top heavy, um, very quick. So um, the versatility of the Sportster line is what we, we like about it, too. So um, I'm always the Sportster guy. The uh, other service riders, um, they're very knowledgeable about Sportsters, and they love to help people, too. But a lot of times if someone gets really deep into uh, you know, wanting to modify a Sportster, they say, oh, go talk to him. He's, he's a Sportster guy. So, um, and I think that's probably why I was part of the reason I was chosen for uh, being the lead on this year's bike. Those are stock wheels. Yep, the wheels are stock. Suspension is stock. The motor's stock. Um, we're concentrating on making as big of impact as possible with, while spending as little money as possible. You know, we also wanted to make it something that's attainable to the average person. A lot of times you see a custom bike, and the average person can't dream of, of affording one. Um, this one, they certainly can. So are you in competition with every dealership? Every dealership in the country that entered. So, mm -hmm. they d dealerships don't have to enter, but they are, they are highly encouraged to. Um, they haven't given us numbers as to how many entered this year. Randy, do you know how many entered last year's contest? Yeah. So it's it's yeah, it's a it's a big contest. Last year our Street seven fifty came in second, I believe. Um it was uh I don't know if you've all seen it, it's the one with the fairings on it. It's a red right red, white and blue paint job, um, called the turnip eater. So it's it's based on an old uh 
Bonneville Salt Flats race bike that uh, Harley had in competition. Uh, the big competition back then was Harley versus Triumph. They called Triumph's turnips, and uh, so that's why it was called the Turnip Eater. So um, this year, uh, Cafe Racer is the way we decided to go with it. So it's also we also took um, took a cue from in '77 Harley Davidson released the XLCR, which was a Cafe Racer designed by Willie G. Davidson. Um, it did not sell a lot of units at the time, and it was only out for two or three years. Um, but it has been a very become a very sought after bike since then. Um, I personally have never seen a privately owned XLCR out anywhere, so uh, they're hard to come by now. So we took a cue from that as well, and and from Willie G. Anyone else? Thank you. Thank you. Everyone, feel free to come up, look around the bike, ask questions. We'll, I'll be here um, if you've got any questions on it or anything like that. Thanks for coming by. We appreciate it.